Jesse Siegel, who will be talking about denotational semantics for differentiable programming. Hi, I'm Jesse. I'm from the University of Oxford, and my talk is about denotational semantics for differentiable programming with manifolds. So, what's differentiable programming? Well, the goal of differentiable programming is to let you differentiate terms in your language with respect to free variables. So, why do you want to do this? Well, one useful application is gradient descent, where you use the local gradient of your function to help you step towards the minimum. This is used in many places to, from probabilistic sampling to machine learning. But there's one issue. What types should we allow used in differentiation? As functional programmers, we love types. So, you know, how many types can we put in there? Uh, the current issue is most systems really only let you differentiate on Euclidean spaces which is a bit restrictive, and you can't necessarily capture what you want with your types. So what's the solution? We move to smooth manifolds. So intuitively, what is a smooth manifold? Locally, it's R to the N, and in some intuitive sense, smooth. So for example, the sphere. Uh, a non-example is a figure eight, because at the meeting point, it is a cross, so it's not the right shape. Uh, other examples are uh, infinite cylinder, sphere, torus, and a more interesting example is a space of 3D rotations. So here's an example usage. Suppose we have a periodic function from R to R. Well, what's a much better type for that? Well, a much better type is from the circle to the reals, where once around the circle represents a full period of the periodic function. So now we've achieved periodicity at the type level, like we want. So how can we use a periodic function for gradient descent? Well, the input for the gradient descent will be sampled periodic data, which can naturally be graphed on a cylinder. And the output will be a fitted sign model where we fit for the amplitude and phase. So what's the main component of this gradient descent method? This function fitter, where we take the model and the data and we differentiate the total error between the model and the data with respect to the model, first for the amplitude and next for the phase shift. So we note here that the syntax for each of these is the same, even though one is a real number and one is an element of the circle. So what's the differentiable language? So it's a first order language to avoid really hairy mathematical difficulties. Uh, it's got finite sums and products, unit type. The base types are smooth manifolds, for example, reals or uh, n-spheres, whatever you want. Uh, and then the real important bit of the language is this type constructor T, uh, the tangent bundle type constructor. So this type constructor has a couple of constructors and destructors uh, between reals. Uh, for the manifolds themselves and iterated tangent bundles. And these constructors and destructors uh, mathematically must be partial. Uh, I'll explain that in a picture later. Each tangent bundle also has some projection and embedding, fu embedding functions, and there are also some relationships for products and sums. So for the actual differentiation, this is the rule. And we can read the term below as differentiate the term t simultaneously with respect to the variables x1 to xn at the point S1 to SN. So you note here that the tangent bundle type constructor appears multiple places here, and most notably as the result. So more on smooth manifolds. So as I said before, a manifold is a space which is locally isomorphic to R to the N. And a smooth manifold also has some extra requirements where we require that these local isomorphisms behave nicely with respect to each other. Uh, so what is an intuition for the tangent bundle. So if you imagine a sphere and you choose a point on the sphere, you can draw a unique tangent plane. And without getting into too much detail, it's a little bit mathematical, uh, you can relate the generalized version of derivative, which this tangent bundle represents, uh, to these tangent planes. And every, all, all of these tangent planes glued together in the proper way is what the tangent bundle is. And so each smooth, i.e. infinitely di differentiable map between smooth manifolds induces one between the tangent bundles, and this is essentially what the derivative is in general. So here's an application of the semantics. So forward mode automatic differentiation, which we heard in Connell Elliott's talk, uh, can be viewed as a program transformation. Uh, so it differentiates with respect to a free variable. Uh, note here that the only base manifold types are R, Here's an example application. So we can see here uh, in the branches that the derivative is being carried along with the actual value. And we can use the semantics to justify this transformation by looking at the semantic equivalence. 
if you read it from left to right, we can see how the derivative construct can be viewed as uh, trans translating the conditional, where the derivative is shoved down into the branches. Uh, an interesting thing to note is that the p, the projection function, and the condition on the right-hand side in the semantics corresponds to the fact that we've dropped dx in the condition in the program. So what are the actual semantics? Relatively simple. Uh, for a judgment, we end up with a partial function from the environment to the type. We split the domain of the partial function into sets which wholly lie in a component of the sum, and these sets have to be topologically open. Uh, we then take total maps from these subsets and map it into one component of the sum of the codomain type. So we can lift the tangent bundle process to judgments where we apply it to the domain of the judgment, and this corresponds to saying for each point in the domain, we just also attach the tangent plane, and we do the tangent bundle construction to the total functions as shown on the previous slides. So finally, we can see the semantics for the differentiation. You can divide it into two parts. So the first part is essentially just some setup, like you'd have for uh, let binding, and then the second bit is the actual tangent bundle related stuff, and this is the core of it which performs the differentiation. So what are some further directions this work can take? You can extend the type system to include some inductive data types. Uh, the data types have to be locally finite dimensional. So for example, lists are locally finite, but infinite lists would be out, same with streams, because it's a whole different mathematical entity. Uh, operational semantics and adequacy would be quite interesting, uh, especially because they would help relate to automatic differentiation implementation. So as we saw, this, some, these semantics can help justify automatic differentiation implementations, and also it seems it would be possible to extend AD implementations to work with smooth manifolds. So the main two takeaways here are that smooth manifolds provide better types for differentiable programming, which we really want, and we can also use the semantics to help justify various automatic differentiation algorithms. Thank you. Thanks, Jesse. So we've got a few questions from the audience. One is, why stop at smooth manifolds? Could you extend to a higher order language if you use diffeological spaces? <laughs> so this was sort of the, the, the hairier bits which I was talking about. Uh, for higher order languages, that's an active area of research, and I, in my opinion, it gets quite a lot more complicated quite quickly. Uh, I've looked at it, and uh, it's probably out of the scope of what I want to do, but there's opportunities. <laughs> it was by anonymous. <laughs> Another question, um, what is required to prove that the choice of charts does not matter? Doesn't what? Does not matter. Uh, so in the example I showed before with the gradient descent, uh, when you use the derivative to uh, figure out which way to shift the phase, there's going to be a, a choice of charts which you're going to have to arbitrarily make. So it sort of requires knowledge of the space which you're working with. Uh, I'm really interested in trying to find a way to nicely specify total functions without charts on manifolds. Uh, and the only implementation which I found which really does this comes from uh, SymPy and SciPy, and that involves a lot of actual symbolic computation to check that the function specified agrees across charts, and that's a, a little bit out of what I want to do. So. Another question is um, whether this approach uh, could be extended to differential forms. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that the, so the, the one extension which I have looked into a little bit is relating this to reverse mode automatic differentiation, which may or may not relate to something called the cotangent bundle, which is sort of in that direction, uh, but I haven't investigated that very much. And then one more question asks about uh, reverse mode differentiation. Yeah, so if we look at the type here, it's sort of got like a, a forward passing type to it. And if you look at the series of talks by Gordon Pockin, which is very related to this, one of the inspirations, uh, you, can, you can see how reverse mode AD for it to work properly uh, with 
threading an argument backwards requires a different type, and it really doesn't mesh well with the mathematics of the tangent bundle. Uh, so probably not very easily. Okay, great. Let's thank Jesse again.